All right, let's go ahead and look at parametrics and some projectile motion. We're gonna do this on Desmos and only make some approximations. Later on, we'll do a little bit more exact uh, mathematics. So for now, um, it says, Matt, the human cannonball is fired out of a cannon eight feet above the ground at a speed of 40 feet per second. The cannon is tilted at an angle of 30 degrees. It says, write a set of parametric equations that can be used to model the flight of Matt. So the first thing we got to remember is that there are two components with this flight. The first one is our horizontal component, which is going to be X. And our horizontal component in this case is going to pretty much mean the distance away from the cannon. So distance away uh, from the cannon. And so we say x equals to, we go through the process, vo meaning the velocity. So I'm going to write 40 cosine of the angle. The angle we found is 30 degrees times t, t meaning the time. Okay. Um, now we're going to go ahead and write our vertical component. And our vertical component in this case is going to just mean the height um, of Matt as he flies through the air. All right, so we're going to write y equals to, now do remember we have negative one half g, and this is gravity. Uh, since we're talking about feet, our gravity is going to be uh, 32 feet per second squared. So what we're going to do is we're going to take half of that. So we're going to get negative 16 t squared plus uh, VO, our initial velocity gain, which is 40, sine of 30, T plus our initial height. That's what our H stands for initial height, which is eight. All right, so let's go over to Desmos. We're gonna plug this in so we can kind of see what's happening with this graph. All right, so we go to Desmos. I'm gonna start by building what I would think is a coordinate point, And I'm gonna type everything in 40, cosine of 30 with t, okay? And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put in our next equation, our y component, which is this negative 16 t squared stuff. So I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna write negative 16 t squared plus 30 sine, oh, I'm sorry, 40, which is our velocity, 40 sine of 30, T on the outside of those parentheses plus eight. Um, now, once we get this uh, point, what we're going to really focus in on doing is saying, okay, does it look like we have enough time for it to hit the ground? And it kind of does. So um, you'll also notice that as we look at this graph, it looks kind of unusual or a little bit strange right now. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to also make sure that I'm looking at the wrench and I'm going to make sure that I'm in the correct mode. And you'll notice we are in 30, 30 degrees, but notice our graph is in radian. So I'm going to want to make sure to switch that out to degrees. And now you can see that this person, uh, Matt, is flying through the air. This looks more like projectile motion going up and slowly coming back down. Now, um, I'm going to start by going to the T values, and I'm going to extend that a few uh, just to see when he comes back down to the ground. So I'm going to say maybe three. Notice what I'm doing. I'm grabbing the x-axis till it turns blue so I can get a good graph on there. So now we have the graph of Matt as he flies through the air um, according to um, the speed and the angle. So let's go ahead and just kind of graph what Matt looks like. Matt's right here. And he is going to take flight through the air, and then he's going to get down here. Now, one thing we really want to pay attention to is this was our x, or distance away from the cannon, okay? And here we have our height of map, okay? So it's really important that we pay attention to that y equals to the height and that x equals to the distance away, all right? So let's go ahead and continue this. As we see is motion, there's a couple of ways I like to do this. I like to start by putting a slider on there. And how I do that is I'm just gonna put in T, I'm gonna put a slider for T. Usually if you just add another letter, it'll add a slider and you can choose what one you wanna choose. And then I can get rid of that line altogether. And what we can do is we can actually write then 
take that slider and move it around a little bit. And you can see the motion of Matt as he flies through the air. Now, this is really going to be important because it's going to allow us to make some calculations throughout the graph. Um, what I do like to do automatically is I like to come down here, maybe start with zero time, go to about four seconds, and I'm going to make my steps small, like 0.01 for these approximations. Okay. So let's go ahead and start going through some of these questions. Um, first questions, we've grafted on Desmos. It says, when will Matt hit the ground? When and where will Matt uh, be at his max height? And approximately where should we put a 10 foot high net? So those are the questions we're gonna ask. Um, before I start, I'm gonna go ahead and make it to where we can see points a little bit easier in our, in our uh, table over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy control C and make an X equals I'm going to copy that equation in, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the next equation in, our y or our vertical component, right? And I'm going to plug that right here, and that'll help us see the x value and the y value of that point just a little bit easier as we trace our curve that we that's on there, okay? So let's go back to our question. It says, uh, first question, going back, says, when will Matt hit the ground? Okay, so let's find out when will Matt hit the ground. We know as we're tracing this along, he flies through the air, flies through the air, flies through the air, and boom, smacks right down here, somewhere hitting the ground. So right over here, we know that we are gonna Matt's gonna hit the uh, ground at some point. So let's write that on there. Hit the um, ground. So he hits the ground right there. Now the question, if we go back to it, says, when will Matt hit the ground? Okay, so when will Matt hit the ground? So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the label. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to find that Y value that is closest to zero as possible. And it looks like it's somewhere right around there, that negative point zero three is going to be approximately that height right there. So this is going to be our height. OK. So we have our height. And we're going to find the time. And let me go ahead and write that on here. This is the time right here. So approximately, when does he hit the ground? It looks like at approximately 1.57 seconds. So let's come back here to our class kick. I'm going to write that down. Uh, looks like he hits the ground at uh, 1.5 seconds. 1.57 seconds. Matt hits the ground. Okay, now let's go to the next question on there. Next question on there says, when and where will Matt be at his max height? So when and where will he be at his max height? Well, we can see just based off of what we're looking at here that his max height should be somewhere around here. Okay, so his max height should be somewhere around there. So let's go ahead and keep tracing along. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna look for that Y value that is approximately the highest. So I'm gonna look for that. I'm looking at it, I'm like, okay, well, there's a 14.2. There's a 14.2, and it doesn't look to get much higher than about 14.2. So let's just approximate one of them. And the question says, if we go back to it, when and where? So when and where? So once again, when is going to be the time. So our time is going to be 0.63 seconds. And where is going to be about 21.8 feet away. So when does he hit his maximum? It looks like 20, it looks like 0. 0.6, 0. 0.3 at point six three seconds. And that answer will be about 21.8 feet away. 21.8 feet away. And that's away from the cannon. So the last question we have is approximately where should a 10 foot high net 
be played so that Matt does not meet his demise. So let's go ahead and put a 10 foot uh, high net on there. So we're gonna trace that until maybe we get to about 10. So we come back here, we're like, all right, let's get to about 10 feet. Well, that's somewhere right around here, but looks like that might be one of our answers somewhere around this 10 point. But you notice we're not going to want to put that net right here. That'd be a bad place because he's still just shooting into the bottom of that net. So obviously when we catch him, we're going to want to, he's going to follow this path somewhere around here. And we're going to want to find this point right over here where he can kind of land on that. And notice what we're asking for again, it's where should we put that net? And that's going to be really important because we have three variables we have to pay attention to. So I'm gonna trace this with my time. Matt's flying through the air, flying through the air and approximately right around here, he gets there and we are gonna look for that 10. It looks like we get to 10 somewhere right around, whoa, let's keep going, right around there. Um, he hits at about 10 feet. So where is that? Well, we know that that needs to be um, our where question again. So if where is going to be about 39.49 or 39.5 feet away from the cannon. So we're going to say that. We're going to go ahead and put that on there. He needs to be, the net needs to be 39 feet away from the cannon. Okay. All right. Well, I hope that helps you out. Um, with uh, graphing parametric equations on Desmos, and then also just kind of looking at the motion and being able to approximate some values using technology. Uh, we'll get to doing some more precise calculations later on.